Howdy! In this video what we're going to do is we're going to finish off, uni finish off uniform circular motion by going through another type of problem and really understanding how this works. And so for number two what I want to do is a ferris wheel with a radius of 14 meters is turning around a horizontal axis through its center. The linear speed of the passenger on the rim is 7 meters per second. What are the magnitude and direction of the passenger's acceleration as she as uh, she passes through part A, the lowest part of cir her circular motion, part B, the highest point, part C, when she's at the same height of the center, and then for part D, how much time does it take for the Ferris wheel to make one full revolution? Okay, well, the way that uh, I kind of drew this wasn't the prettiest of Ferris wheels, but uh, part A was at the lowest point of her circular motion, part B is at the highest point, and then part C is when she's at the same height as the center. So here is my attempt at a Ferris wheel, and uh, you're just moving around in a circle. Okay, so let's find our radial acceleration. Now, it says that I'm moving with a constant velocity. Because I'm moving with a constant velocity, remember, what did I mention in that last video? That deals with your, ta that's going to be tangent to your motion. And so your tangential acceleration would be zero. And your centripetal acceleration, that's v squared over r. We have v to be seven. We know that our radius r is 14. And so throwing this into your calculator, we get 3.5 meters per second squared. Remember, acceleration, it's a vector. And notice how the x component of this vector is your tangential, and the y component of this vector is your radial acceleration. And so your tangential is zero. Our radial we found to be 3.5. And so if I want to find the magnitude and direction of her total acceleration, the magnitude of her acceleration is just 3.5. That one's going to be kind of easy because it's all going in the y direction. And the direction, well, I mean, it's straight up. Okay, positive y direction, it's straight up. That's it. But let's take a look at part B. Part B, what about at the highest point of her circular motion? For part B, because you're still moving, you know, with the constant velocity, your tangential acceleration is still zero. However, your radial acceleration, which is v squared over r, is, you know, once again, 3.5. And so, my acceleration vector, okay, my acceleration vector, your tangential as well as your radial, is just going to be 0, negative 3.5, which means that my magnitude is still 3.5 meters per second squared. And as for my direction, it's now straight down. It's going purely in the negative y direction, had I said positive x to the right, positive y up. But let's really take a close look at c. What if she's at the same height? For part c, Notice that you do have a tangential acceleration, and that tangential acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity that's pointed straight downwards, okay? And so you have a tangential acceleration of 9.8. More specifically, it's negative 9.8 because I'm going to call that downwards. Now, your centripetal acceleration is now pointed to the right. Remember, what else did I talk about in the previous video? I told you that the radial acceleration is always pointed towards the center of the circle. And so my AR is going to be in my x direction. Your tangential is in the y direction. And so for your radial acceleration, all that's constant. Since you have a constant velocity, you have a constant radial acceleration. But it didn't ask for what's the magnitude and direction of the radial. It said what's the magnitude and direction of the passenger's total acceleration. And so I have an x component of 3.5 meters per second squared, a y component of a negative 9.8 you know, meters per second squared. And so the magnitude of my acceleration is the magnitude of this vector. And when I take the magnitude of this vector right here, you end up getting 10.4 meters per second squared. And as for my direction, my theta, so if I'm looking for this theta right here, if I add these two vectors, this will be my total acceleration. And so this angle is, I'm going to use tangent because opposite this angle is my tangential of negative 
adjacent to this angle is my radial, which is 3.5. And what I get when I throw that into the calculator is a negative 70.3 degrees. And the negative 70.3, whenever you get that, all that means is that if I start here at theta equals zero, just go basically um, clockwise. You're going backwards 70.3 degrees. Okay, And so that would be your direction. And then for part D, how much time does it take for the Ferris wheel to make one complete revolution? By definition, that's your period. That's T. And so if your velocity, V, is equal to 2 pi r over T, and by doing a little bit of algebra, T is just 2 pi r over V. We already know r. My r is 14. We already know V. V is given to be 7. And whenever you throw this into the calculator, you're going to get 12.6. And so by definition, it takes 12.6 seconds to make one complete revolution around this Ferris wheel. And it's this, this is how you're going to determine or basically deal with uniform circular motion.